Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be taking an extended uh, inside look at my newest book, The Comic Book Lesson, which is a, a kind of a sequel to this uh, earlier book, The Drawing Lesson. I'll talk more about that as we go along, but let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the first book was about a boy who wanted to learn how to draw, and uh, so I decided this time to do a book about a girl who wants to make uh, her very own comic book. Uh, and the name of the main character is Emily, and at the very beginning uh, of the story, she walks into this comic book store. And what I thought I might do is give you a, a kind of a reading to kind of throw you into one of the early scenes so that you can get a sense of uh, how I'm blending together uh, storytelling with actual instruction. So just to set this up a little, this is Trudy. She is a high school student who uh, knows quite a lot about comics, even if she hasn't made one herself. And she agrees, uh, as the teacher did in the uh, earlier book, to teach uh, our main character, Emily, uh, a thing or two about creating comics. And so what we're going to do is jump into that scene, and I'm going to take you through it panel by panel. Now, to be totally honest, I've never even made a complete comic book story before. But from what I've learned, it's all about deciding what you want the readers to see. Which things you think the readers need to see. So, let's say I want to do a scene where my main character is hanging from a branch at the top of a cliff, and then the branch breaks. As a comic creator, I need to decide how I'm going to present this sequence to the readers. It could be as simple as this, right? Is he gonna die? He's my main character. If he dies, I'm out of a job. Better let him live. Agreed. So anyway, what you've got to ask yourself as a storyteller is whether this is really the best way of presenting the sequence. Are there other things I could show the reader? Things that would build a little more suspense? Hmm. Well, you could add one more panel right here in the middle. Like one where the branch is starting to break, but it hasn't broken yet. Bingo. You're thinking like a comic creator already. Adding more panels conveys a sense of more time passing, which allows you to make the reader a little nervous about things. Will the branch break? Will it hold? But remember, you've always got lots of options in terms of what the reader sees. Instead of showing everything from the same point of view, you could use close-ups, like they do in the movies to make the readers aware of certain details. Like this. Right. This way the reader can see that the branch is cracking. And then we can go to the panel where it actually breaks. We could, but come on. We've got the readers where we want them. Why not draw things out a little and ratchet up the tension even more? We could add a close-up of the guy's face, allowing people to better understand his emotions. When you see his face, you sympathize with what he's going through, right? That's one of the most important jobs a storyteller has, to make the readers care. Wait, I've got an idea. To make it extra exciting, you could make the next panel a close-up of the branch, only this time it's super close to the breaking point. You know, like it's hanging by a thread. And then, the panel after that is another close-up of the guy's face, but this time he's even more freaked out. Right? His eyes are like popping out of his head. And then, crack! That's when the branch breaks. You, my friend, have a bright future in comics. And that's where we'll end it for now, but I just wanted you to get a taste of how the actual instructional stuff goes. And that really was what was happening in this scene, uh, uh, showing you how you can read this story, and as Emily learns something about comics, you, uh, the reader, are also learning those very same things. Uh, but let's go ahead and quickly go through the various chapters and show what different kinds of topics I cover. So chapter three is the next lesson chapter in the book, and it's all about character design. Uh, and it begins at this movie theater. I thought some of you might get a kick out of seeing the second movie <laughs> is Brody's Ghost. A little wishful thinking there on my part. Uh, but I'll show you just a little bit of what happens in this chapter. So they start talking about character design, and Trudy has Emily draw a picture of the main character from the project she wants to create called uh, Chloe Klugman Petfinder. And uh, Trudy has uh, 
Emily draw the same character twice, but without looking at how she drew the character the first time. And uh, naturally enough, there are slight discrepancies between the two versions, and this allows uh, Trudy to start teaching her about, you know, devising a system for keeping the proportions and the facial features consistent. Uh, in your drawings of your uh, comic book character from one panel to the next. And so uh, all of these chapters are kind of organized into certain material, this one being about that sort of consistency of character design. Uh, and the next chapter that we go to is going to be all about facial expressions. Now one interesting thing that happened as I got into creating this book is I realized that the actual comic panels could become examples of the things that the characters are talking about. It's a little hard to explain, but I'm going to show you an example. They end up going to Storbex, a, loco a location or a chain, a coffee chain that was established in the first um, uh, book in the series. And uh, as they sit down and uh, Trudy starts giving advice, we come to this section where she says, excellent, you're really making, or you're really thinking things through now. Um, I'm glad to see uh, you practicing the three-quarter view. Now, of course, Trudy herself is drawn in kind of a three-quarter uh, view in this panel. Uh, that's an important one for comics, especially in dialogue scenes. Well, they're in the middle of a dialogue scene. And then she, uh, Emily, says, uh, here's a page where I practice drawing her from above in case I ever have to do a bird's eye view. And naturally enough, this panel is in a bird's eye view. So there's a lot of fun stuff like that that you find yourself reading the story and realizing, oh wow, the comic is an example of the very thing uh, that they're talking about. But let's move on a little more into uh, how she starts teaching about facial expressions. So one of the things in the chapter is where Trudy has uh, Emily try to draw the character looking surprised. And so she does the raised eyebrows and she does an open mouth. And of course you're beginning to get a look of surprise, but Trudy encourages her to draw the eyes more uh, open wide. And of course that ends up being the, the key to making a, a huge difference in conveying the look of surprise. And that's kind of the fun thing about this series is you see the progress, right? You see um, a version that is maybe not ideal and then you see how to improve that and take it to a higher level. Uh, that's where I think this series has uh, an advantage over more of a dry standard instructional book, which tends mostly to only show you the right way. Well, sometimes it can be helpful to see um, you know, the uh, slightly flawed way first and then see how you can improve that. Now those of you who know the first book know that it's all about this boy and his uh, teacher and how there's a, a certain bond that develops between the two of them. I did not want to repeat that formula uh, and have it be exactly the same thing. So I hit on this idea of what if she has three different teachers? and she moves from one to the next. That's going to bring a different di uh, dynamic to the story. And so in this next chapter, she goes to an anime convention, which was of course fun. You get to see me drawing different <laughs> things that I'm a fan of. And uh, this is where she gets to meet a character named Madeline. And so, you know, Trudy was this high school student that was, you know, kind of starting to make her way towards creating a comic. With this next teacher, we have uh, Madeline, who is a, a college student and a self-published comic creator. So it's like one step higher, uh, and Emily starts to get advice from someone who has actually uh, created real comics. I think you'll get a kick out of seeing uh, the name of the imaginary comic series that I came up with for her. It's Electric Angel Nurse Mizuki. Uh, so I had fun creating this sort of imaginary self-published comic that uh, Madeline had created. And of course, before you know it, the two of them are sitting down and having a little lesson together. So this next chapter is about panel sequences. And as they sit down, uh, uh, Madeline has her write out a little bit of script. All right, so now we're really starting to unlock the process. Uh, of creating comics and showing how do you go from an idea that's in your head of like a little snippet of dialogue, a, a very brief moment in the story, how do you change this into comic book storytelling? And you see really panel by panel, line by line, how a comic book uh, creator would do this, would go from the idea to the actual um, drawings. Uh, that, that tell the story. And I do think that that is the sort of heart and soul of comic book creation. And that's what this book is all about, trying to uh, unlock that fundamental process 
because I can't, you know, I can't predict what type of comic you want to do, and so I can't teach a specific style. Um, but what I can do is drill down to the fundamental process of what do all comic book creators need to do, uh, no matter what style they're working in. And that's where I think this book hopefully differs from a lot of other How to Make Comics uh, instructional books, because it's not so much about, here's how to draw capes or whatever. It's m much more about the fundamental process that all uh, comic book creators need to get into. And it, it really tries to teach you how to think the way that a comic book creator thinks. So the next chapter is all about presenting environments. Uh, and this one really takes things even farther in terms of uh, showing you, well, I'll go to the first version that Emily creates of this sequence that is meant to establish a, a new location for her character, Chloe Klugman. And um, what you see is Emily's best effort with the knowledge that she has at how to present this scene. Well, what I get to do is have Madeline come along and take that exact same scene and lay it out in a different way, putting different things into the panels. And then you can compare between those and see, oh, what did she change? What stayed the same? Why did she make those changes? It all gets explained uh, in this chapter. And to me, that's, I mean, this is really, you're getting into the actual process of comic book storytelling here when you can compare different ways of doing it and, uh, and start to understand why would you change that? How is this better? How does this improve things? Uh, and again, I, I think in a lot of ways this chapter is maybe gets you into the heart and soul of actual, um, you know, all the fundamentals of what you need to learn uh, to get started in comics. So I told you there were uh, three different teachers uh, in the story, and the third one is a uh, woman named Sophie, who really is a full-time uh, graphic novelist. And so we've gone to the very highest level. Now, I've been talking a lot about the lessons. I haven't talked so much about the story. Uh, and so I thought it might be fun to get a little bit into just a brief little snapshot of what the more human dimension of the story is like. And so... They're riding their bikes, going off to Sophie's uh, house, and Emily says, I'm so nervous. My story's not good enough. Uh, it's not nearly good enough. And uh, Madeline says, relax, will you? She's going to love it. So they arrive at uh, Sophie's house, and uh, they're heading around to the back. She said, when we got here, to just go around back. And uh, sure enough, she arrives and finds Sophie uh, playing with her son, uh, in the sort of portable mini pool uh, in the backyard. Anybody need a new lifeguard? Madeline! Madeline! Come to think of it, I could use a little break. Did you bring a swim suit? Sophie, this is my friend Emily. Ah, you must be that new comic creator Madeline told me about. Well, I'm trying to be. Oh, there's no trying to be when it comes to comics, Emily. You're born with it in your blood. Madwin! You're not playing with me! Oh, yes, I am. Because I am a giant purple squid monster. And I am coming over there to give you a million tickles! Splosh, splish, splash. Did you bring your comic book with you? Um, yes, but Madeline, Emily and I are going to go inside for a while. Uh, you'll be okay out here with Toby? Absolutely. I got you, squib monster! So eventually Sophie invites Emily into her house, and the whole idea is that Sophie is going to read her uh, completed comic, at least the sort of rough form version of her uh, comic, and tell her, you know, Sophie's going to tell Emily... Uh, what her thoughts are, what her, you know, what advice she has. And so there's this uh, page here where she's, <laughs> Emily's eating this piece of pie. It almost becomes like a ticking clock or something so that you get a sense of how much time is going by as Emily's waiting to hear the verdict um, from Sophie. And so I thought I'd throw you into this uh, scene here 
where, as I said, we start to get into something a little more... You get into the sort of the characters and the human element of the story. And uh, Sophie says, This is the first time you've tried to make a comic book story? Yes. I remember my first story. 30 years ago now. I didn't have the faintest clue what I was doing. But I was hooked, you know? The panels, the speech bubbles, everything about it. I wanted to keep going, keep trying new things, keep learning. I'm still learning. That part never stops, if you're lucky. You should be proud, Emily. There's good stuff in this. Lots of good stuff. And that's where I think I should probably wind things down, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, I do hope that you could see how there is a human element to this story. It's not just a series of lessons. And as you read along, you become more attached to Emily and you care about her journey. And, uh, you know, suffice to say, Sophie, the uh, comics professional, gives her a lot of important uh, information about comic books do's and don'ts and so forth. But uh, perhaps even more significant than that is that the human element and the sort of twists and turns that happen at the end of the story. People who got the first book, the drawing lesson, will recall that uh, it gets surprisingly emotional towards the end. Well, this one uh, is very much the same. Maybe it gets even a little more emotional, I dare say. Uh, in those final uh, chapters, but I don't want to give any of that away. I think it'll be best for you to discover it when you uh, read the book yourself. And thanks in advance to anyone who does go ahead and pre-order this book. It's going to be out on July 26th. I've put a link uh, in the description of this video if you want to order, and if you do, you have my very heartfelt gratitude. But let's go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.